So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and this is an update video on my Christmas decorations outside. In this video I'm going to give you guys some helpful tips that I've used over the years to lessen the frustration of putting up outdoor decorations, especially when you get into doing this many decorations. Uh, every year I cuss and I get pissed during this process and I try and find ways to lessen the amount of cussing and frustration that happens during this process. Now I always try and make my display a little bit better than the year before and I always try and add something. So I did make something out of some recycled material from a previous project. I'm going to show you that as well. And as with all my videos guys, I try and give the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. So if you find this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. So let's get to it. So one of the most common questions I get asked is how I hang my icicle lights along my roof line on the tile roof. So what I used to do is actually use Christmas ornament hooks. So all I would do is take that ornament hook, wrap it around the nail, holding the outer tile to the roof. And I would leave those on those nails year round so I wouldn't have to mess with it the next year. However, after a couple years, they started losing their strength. They wouldn't hold the icicle lights up and I'd have my icicles fall or start drooping halfway through the month. So that got really annoying because I'd have to get the ladder out and go put those back up. So what I decided to do is get a little heavier duty tie wire and replace those so I wouldn't have this problem anymore. So right here you can kind of see, I just wrap that tie wire around the nail, take a pair of needle nose and give it a good turn so it will never come off of that nail and then just cut it and bend it to a hook. Now on a couple of these, I did have to pull the nails out just a little bit with a flathead screwdriver because this wire was a little thicker. And then I would just take a hammer if needed and tap them back in. Most of the time I would not have to do this, but there was a handful of them that were just too tight to the tile where I could not loop the wire through. And I never had a problem with cracking a tile or anything like that when I had to do this. And if you were a little bit nervous about cracking a tile, you could always grab a punch so you make sure you just hit the head of that nail. So now we're going to get into the new decoration that I actually made. This is some leftover aluminum sheeting from residing my enclosed trailer. And it was just sitting out back for a couple years now, so I decided to do something with it. So I just drew the pattern out of some mountains, and I cut that out using my jigsaw. Now I had made some shorter ones that went at the very front of my yard a couple years ago or maybe it was just a year ago and I really liked the way those looked so that's why I decided to do this because I was going to put these ones up against my house. Then I obviously I had to make a way to hold these in place so I made some steel stakes out of some half by eighth inch flat bar that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. I probably got mine at a steel supplier but irregardless this steel material is very cheap and easy to cut and manipulate. So I just used a pair of bolt cutters to cut that steel. Most likely the bolt cutters will not cut all the way through the steel. However, if you just bend it back and forth, it will snap off without a problem. Then I threw it in my vise, bent it at a 90, then flipped it over using the hammer and I bent it directly to a hook. Then I just took those pieces of steel over to my grinder and ground a point on the other end so it would stake into the ground good. So one of the other most frustrating things about doing Christmas decorations outside for me is the stakes that come with your blow ups or for that matter, any Christmas decoration. But you can see how easy this stake, I pounded that thing about a foot into the ground without a problem, never bent, never gave me an issue. And because of that, I ended up making about 32 of these stakes out of some more material that I had. And it took me about 45 minutes to do so basically each one of those stakes took me a little bit over a minute a piece to make and it's going to be well worth it for the amount of time and frustration it's going to save me in the future putting my blow ups and Christmas decorations up. Now obviously there's certain decorations that these stakes won't work with but for the most part which the blow ups is the main thing I was trying to make stakes for it's going to work great. So here's a quick video showing some of the stakes that usually come with those blow ups. You can see how easily they bent. Now I had also made some stakes like this out of some quarter inch round material. Those did work pretty good. I also tried to make some in the shape of an L. Those didn't work very good, but I think if the L was more of a hook, it would have worked better. 
So here's the new stake I made, and you can see how easily that thing pounded into the ground and how easily they can come up out of the ground. So another thing that can cause a lot of frustration is the extension cord situation. A lot of the blow-ups have these big AC to DC converters, and because of those big converters, you can't plug three things into some of these extension cords. So what I ended up buying for this year, and I got three of them for $23 on the Amazon, was these one to three extension cords, so now that won't be an issue. So the amount of extension cords that I use for my front yard is absolutely ridiculous. And if I paid full price, I'd probably be in the $1,000 range for extension cords. So what I usually do is go the day after Christmas to Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, and get these extension cords that they had overstocked for Christmas, and usually they have them on clearance. And that saved me a bunch of money as far as this goes. So another thing that happened to us this year is our Santa in an outhouse blow up, which is about eight years old, was not inflating up all the way. And I got looking at this to figure out why, because that wasn't a cheap blow up by any means. And I wanted to see if I could fix it. So what ended up happening is a lot of the times on these blow ups, they will use a zip tie to hold the material to the blower motor. And all that happened was the zip tie broke. And this will happen to zip ties over the years. They get dry and brittle and they will just snap. Now, depending on the size of your blow up, it will take a pretty long zip tie and you do not want to have to put two zip ties together because then you will not be able to feed it through the fabric. So I got one really long zip tie, fed it through, went ahead and started it, then got the blower motor, put it up into place, making sure the fabric wasn't twisted and tighten down that zip tie. Now this is about the second or third blow up that I've had to do this to, and it's not a big deal to do this repair. Now I know a lot of people like to cut the remaining zip tie off the end after you've tightened it down. I did not do that because that can leave a very sharp edge, which I thought could rip the fabric. So if you do do that, just make sure you cut it really short so that can't happen. Now over the last couple of years, we had struggled with getting Santa to open and close the door like he normally would. But after doing this repair, he worked better than he has in a couple of years. Another thing to look for if your blow up's not inflating like it used to is holes in the material. Right here, I used some duct tape to patch this old Santa and he actually blew up better than he has in a couple of years as well. He still needs a little help with some extra ropes though. I did look up on Amazon and they do make patches if you don't want to use duct tape and they are pretty cheap. So one other thing I've had happen is I've ripped the straps off of the side of the blow ups using the hammer to install a stake because some of those straps don't stick out very far past the blow up. And I like to have the inflatables blown up to make sure they look good when I put the stakes in. So what I ended up doing is just taking some small pieces of rope, tie an overhand knot, basically making a loop. Then I loop that through the blow up strap and back through itself. And then I use my stake at that point and that gets my stakes farther away from my blow up. So there's no chance of me ruining my blow ups while I'm trying to stake them down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information. If so, again, make sure you hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.